those who are visually impaired. Hi, guys. Hey, Tess, how are you? Jamal, hi. Hi, how's it going? And you brought your dad, Roger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love it. Hi, Max. Hey, good to see you. Julie. Hi. 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 Thank you all so much for coming. It's going to be an amazing night. Chef Matt has prepared some delicious dishes for us. And feel free, you don't need to wear your I'm mask. Put these on? Nope. We've all been tested twice in the last week, so needless to say, we're safe. Yeah. Let's just have some fun. Come on in. Yes. Yeah, all right. Canada. This is Home for the Holidays, presented by President's Choice. I can't begin to tell you how excited I am to be here and welcome such an incredible group of guests. I'd like to call out Chef Matt, who is so graciously going to take care of us this evening. Plus, there will be a few surprises along the way. Guys, thanks so much for, for being here. Doesn't it feel great to just be in close proximity with the other humans? The gang's back together again, <laughs> finally. This is our annual tradition that we always do. That's right. It's been a, a roller coaster these last six or seven months, I'm sure, for all of you. What has been the biggest change, would you say? I'm un unemployed right now because the band isn't touring. But we will get back. That was supposed to be a joke, guys. Just a laugh. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, obviously, in my line of work, it's about going out and, on tour and playing for audiences, same with Julie. And so it's a matter about being creative in a different kind of way. So we've been recording from home a lot. Um, we've been doing some stuff online. Jamal, what's changed for you? Changed for me is I'm in Canada, so I'm very glad about that. And just come see my fam. I haven't seen my fam, my dad, in like over a year. Been um, eating my mom's home cooked food, so. Julie, what do you miss most about pre-COVID life? Well, I'm touchy-feely, so I love to kiss and hug and all that stuff. And it's, um, you know, actually, this is probably a family show, so I won't go um, there all the way. <laughs> with, uh, I miss that, the touchy feeliness. I mean, I have to be really careful with my dad. He's 81. I have to be super considerate, you know? But, uh, yeah, I love to touch and kiss and hug and dance and, and sing. Mm -hmm. I miss singing, Yeah. you know? But you said people. you've been so productive. I'm curious, what new things have people learned or picked up over over the last few months? I've been on the grill a lot. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I'm, not, I'm not quite the grill master, but, okay. you know, I'm improving. Soon to be? Yeah, soon to be the grill master. Well, we haven't been able to go to any restaurants or mm -hmm. anything like that, right? So, some jerk chicken. You don't know uh, nothing about jerk, jerk chicken. Jerk chicken. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, jerk chicken. You know, <laughs> jerk chicken. What, I, what I really want to do is learn how to make some oxtail. I got to get some yeah, lessons you don't from know my nothing sister. About no oxtail, <laughs> man. What's wrong with you? Who's making the oxtail in your house? Huh? Oh, we, do, we don't eat a lot of beef, but mm -hmm. jerk Oxtail, chicken. Jerk chicken. Yeah, jerk chicken. Jamaican food, jerk chicken. Mm -hmm. Yeah, jerk Plankton, chicken is, yeah. Patties. Yeah. Ackee and saltfish. Ackee and saltfish. Yum. 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 Oh, yeah. Yum. <laughs> yum. 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 Dumpling. Dumpling. With so much uncertainty in these last few months, I don't know about you guys, but sometimes I've felt guilty for actually experiencing happiness or gratitude or finding the upside. What have some of the positives been for you through this time? Being grateful that I was blessed with this gift, like I didn't ask for it. So sometimes when I think about my voice and being able to sing and sing well, and that music is such a healing um, ointment, I call it the polysporin of life. Like without of the world without music, what would that be? If your voice is the polysporin of life, I think mine must be rubbing alcohol or something <laughs> horrible, horribly toxic. Just, just do them double axles, and, <laughs> you know what I mean? That's that's like a, that's like your voice. That's musical. You have a favorite song to sing? I I do have a favorite song to sing. Yeah. What's it called? Rise up this morning. Smile at the rising sun. Three little birds pitch by my doorstep, singing sweet songs, a melody's pure and true. Singing, this is my message to you. Baby, don't worry about a thing. Yeah. Cause every little thing is gonna be all right. Hey. <laughs> you gotta bring out the bomb. I love, I love the bomb. I love the bomb. I'm signing up for your class, by the way. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll all be there. 5 a.m. Yeah, yeah, tomorrow. 5 a.m. We'll 5 a.m. Let's go. With the holidays right around the corner, 
What kind of traditions or memories do you have of your childhood? Well, yeah, our family eats a lot of like turkey, mashed potatoes, that yeah. kind of thing. My sister does a great job of preparing it for everybody. So my, my mom grew up going to church, and my dad uh, is Jewish, Jewish family, but kind of lazy in terms of passing on those lessons and traditions down to me. But there was a window of time between like the age of like six and to 10, where he's like, I'm gonna teach my kid a little something about our traditions. So we ate potato latkes until about 10 years old, and then we stopped doing it, because he was like, well, you know what? We're just gonna really focus on Christmas right now. And so uh, I have a little bit of memories. That's the only uh, part of my Jewish upbringing that I actually... Maybe this is the year to bring them back. Maybe, Get they're them really back delicious. in the Kerman household. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what kind of traditions have you kept up as adults that maybe you had as you were kids? Jamal, can you think of any? Playing basketball. Um... <laughs> How come these traditions involve sports? <laughs> that is, that is, that is. I don't know, I'd be, I'd be like my whole life on my basketball teachings from him, so I can't skate. I don't know how you guys do that. Uh, That'll be the next special. We'll, we'll yeah. swap. No, I got, I, when I go, I got the chair. I got, I got, I got, I'll be right there with the little kids scooting by me. Um, but no, nah, we used to just, you know, watch the games. I think that was one thing. Christmas Day yeah, games. Christmas Day uh, games was one favorite. of the big things, so. That's a Christmas tradition for me, is my dad and I escaping the family to watch the basketball games. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you coach Jamal when you were when he was younger? Yeah, all the way up. Really? Yeah. Did Ty coach you? Yeah, same thing. I tell him a lot of stuff too. Don't get it twisted. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my uh, my dad played too, so he okay. he, he coached me. Uh, played 17 years in the league, whatever it was. So he'll probably tell you he told me everything I know, but I'd like to think I showed him a few things too. But no, it's cool. I was just curious. That's cool. that's unreal. Cool. I mean, I'm good at like floor hockey. Like yeah. I, could play, I could play goalie. I'd be on my knees and I'd be like, you know. <laughs> mini stick. <laughs> yeah, I'm mini with stick, you there. Yeah. <laughs> but you talk about that pursuit of greatness and excellence and finding the motivation, which is clearly intrinsic. How is it? I mean, you're all top elite level performers, whether it's, you know, on the so ice or you, yeah. on the stage. Yeah. 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 Long ago. <laughs> long ago. But how do you, or where do you continue to find that inspiration to push yourself? I was gonna say passion, but yeah, you guys, passion. You go, you go, yeah, go, go. go ahead. Absolutely, you passion. Uh, you know, I often I, com I compare it to Stevie Wonder, not having sight, but has written so many brilliant songs. So in his mind's eye, what he's been able to see, this gift was was given to me to be to of service. I'm also, I, I'm terrified of losing the job. So that's why one of the reasons why I work really hard is because I feel so lucky that I get this thing where every morning I wake up and think about. What's the next song let, we want to write? Let me give you a nugget, though. Let me give you a nugget. Mm -hmm. You said you're terrified to lose the job. Yeah. Right? So to me, that lets me think about career. Mm -hmm. But a career is what you're paid for. Yeah. But a calling yeah. is what you're made for. So focus on your calling, mm -hmm. and, you'll know, and you won't be terrified. Yeah. Because you're right. made for it. You're like a motivational speaker. Yeah. Right? I, know. I, know. I, I, I never, even, <laughs> over here. I've never Ooh. even thought about it. Yeah. Before. Coming up after the break, we'll be joined by some more surprise guests. Plus, get to know our group just a little more. The holidays should always have purple popcorn, right? Say hello to the PC Seesaw Purple Kernel Popcorn. Yeah, we said purple. These colorful kernels are fluffier, airier, and tastier. Pop it, serve it, love it. How to level up holiday indulgence. Go on. We started with a decadent chocolate chip cookie, and then we thought big. A pie-sized cookie? No, a cookie pie filled with... What smells so good? Well, it's kind of fudgy, toffee, chocolate. Just try it. And that's not just a holiday treat. It's a whole new level of indulgence. The PC Decadent Chocolate Chip Cookie Pie. How to reinvent holiday tradition. We took a certified classic and remixed it with a winter flavor, then added some holiday magic. Pepperminty, marshmallowy, chocolatey. I'm in. PC Peppermint Hot Chocolate Ice Cream. Tradition in a refreshing new way. Water. It's so watery. Well, it's already in my mouth. Uh, oh! Mmm! <laughs> 
delicious. Can I keep all of these? How to level up holiday indulgence. Go on. We started with a decadent chocolate chip cookie. And then we thought big. A pie-sized cookie? No, the PC Decadent Chocolate Chip Cookie Pie. A whole new level of indulgence. Holidays shouldn't only be spent in the kitchen, right? Presenting the fully cooked PC Boneless Spiral Sliced Hickory Smoked Ham with Brown Sugar Glaze Pouch. Heat it, glaze it, slice it, serve it. Easy to make and even easier to love. You talk about song and the gift of music and art, entertainment, but food also brings us together and conjures these memories that are so associative. I'm wondering what holiday foods trigger a special memory for each of you? What about you, Max? Turkey, I think. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty, pretty standard yeah. as a staple, I guess. <laughs> Turkey? <laughs> no? Yeah. Oh, I, 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 I don't eat turkey, that's why. Uh, no? Okay. He sounded like he was guessing. I know. Turkey? <laughs> oh, I think For that, me, it was turkey. That's like the staple of every holiday meal, right? Yeah, kind yeah. of Canada. I'm a turkey <laughs> I mean, man. Honest to God, I like that's what I do during the holiday. I just make the turkey. When I was in Philadelphia, my wife and I, we always had the single guys or guys who didn't have family, you know, around. We'd invite them over to our house for Thanksgiving and Christmas. I feel those teammates are somewhere sitting around saying the best gift they've ever been given is that experience Probably with the your leftovers. family. <laughs> the, the leftovers that they get sent home with. An expensive cheese spread is, is something I've sort of grown into. I didn't really think yes. about it much as a kid, but when you see expensive cheese, you're like, all right, yeah. I, could, I could get into that. I'm gonna go see who that might be. Nick, hi. Hi, how are you? You're the big surprise. Come on in. Thanks for joining us, Nick. Yeah, thanks for having me. Please have a seat. <laughs> Nick, thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks. And a thanks huge congratulations. I mean, it's been an incredibly exciting time for you. Coach of the Year. Do you ever unplug fully from the game? Are you able to disconnect, or are you always the wheels always spinning for you? No, I unplug a lot. You do? Max, have you been on the court with Nick? Actually, yeah, because I'm way more interested in thinking and talking about basketball. And so when I when we hang out, he asks me questions about music, and then I just ask him questions about basketball. You gave me a shooting lesson the other day. Yeah, I, I had Max on the good. court the other day. Yeah. Uh, had him out there hitting threes. It was good. Hey, but Devlin was Jamal, there and he was calling. Tomorrow, seriously, he made a three, about yeah. one for, one yeah. for three. <laughs> like one for three? One for three. Like, well, I was, no, one for two even. Maybe one for two. I have the footage. <laughs> What's up, Chef Matt? Yeah, we got some uh, avocado bites and Ooh, wow. nacho bites. Thank you. I hate the phrase cheat meal because, I mean, I'm all about sort of not depriving yourself. You, but you are expected, many of you, to be in top shape all the time, and, and that's demanding and disciplined. You earn it, though, once in a while, right? Uh, like chocolate was a go-to for me that I couldn't, I just need it all the time. But how do you indulge? What's a treat for you, Jamal? Chips. Chips? No, Jamal, what's your, your so guilty pleasure? I perfected it. So, you cinnamon oatmeal with uh, cereal on top, cornflakes, whatever, ice cream on top, mm. so, and obviously the milk. Mm -hmm. So, that whole comp it's like hot at the bottom and then it's cold at the top. Amazing try, you gotta try yeah, that. Yeah. And it's, at the same time, it's healthy because the oatmeal's at the bottom, right? So. The ice cream's the cheating part. Uh, you know? <laughs> I like that. Speaking of desserts, Chef Matt, what do you have here for us? This is the PC, the decadent chocolate chip cookie pie. It's Ooh. absolutely delicious. So the decadent cookies yeah. are my favorite of all time yeah. anyways. I like that we're skipping to dessert here. I will say I miss that about being an athlete when rest days were productive. Like you felt like, okay, I'm doing my job today yeah. by doing nothing. Yeah. <laughs> Max, how about you? <laughs> He's like, what's that? Yeah. Uh, no, you know, we, we like to stay pretty busy. I, I'm a bit of a busybody, so I actually have a hard time unplugging or our own little small business, so we're always thinking about, you know, the next song we were on to write or the next tour we're going to go on or what the next music video looks like. But I do like, honestly, playing sports. So, like, we were down in L.A. recording our next record just before the pandemic hit, and playing basketball with the locals there was, like, the way I would uh, relax. So it's, like, sort of the, the opposite. It's yeah, many like, of us would turn to music, I would think. Mm-hmm. And are you able to listen to songs without having that 
critical ear for how it's structured or the tone or are you mm -hmm. able to listen as a fan well the best songs are the ones where you don't notice it you're just really enjoying it i think and then the songs that you think could have been done better your critical ear is there but i also look at some of the those other songs like cheat meals like there's those songs that you just want to twerk or you just want to you know what, I mean? <laughs> <laughs> what about a song you wish you'd written there's so many changes from week to week. Probably every Stevie Wonder song. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you want to be kind of always challenged, right? Yeah. You want to you want to see somebody who does something that goes, oh my God, I can't, these guys are so much better than me. I don't know. Like, and that makes you motivated to, you know, it's like probably like an athlete where you see someone like, I gotta work a little harder. That like those are the people you want to surround yourself with. I love listening to the to the greats, like to the well, what I consider the greats. So the the Tina Turners, Etta James, the Patty, the Gladys, the you know, yeah. and going back to Mahalia Jackson. I'm, I'm from the church, you know. I started singing when I was six, so I consider myself a vocal athlete. I love being around athletes, holla, because I train myself just that way. I eat yeah. for my voice, I sleep for my voice, I work out for my voice. Um, I was in a musical this year and carried the the whole company. And Carolina change and so recognizing that was that a new skill for you to learn how to do a musical like because there's hell yeah because you have to learn a lot of lines probably lines. and choreography in a different yep. way imposter syndrome was there all day and oh, that's wow. why I, I felt the fear and did it anyway when mm. it came to me I was like okay Chef Matt, can you tell us a little bit about what you're bringing us? Yeah, absolutely. So we have a butter puff pastry with some smoked salmon and cream cheese and then we also have a porchetta in a sandwich Enjoy, guys. Looks amazing. Thank, Thank you so much. OK, guys, well, I did promise some special guests, so I'd like to introduce you to my good friends, Alicia Cuthbert and Dion Phaneuf. Hi, Tessa. Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for having us. We wish we could be there in person. Definitely looks like we're missing out on some amazing food. Hey, Max, are you letting anyone get a word in up there, or are you uh, the life of the party tonight? <laughs> what the f***? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's Max. I'm probably talking about Max. <laughs> OK, since it's the holidays, I'm curious. What are the best gifts you've exchanged? I think the best gift we've ever had uh, over the holidays was our daughter, Zaphire. So in 2017, we had our, our baby girl, and that's the Best gift we've ever had during the holidays. Bar none, the best gift we've ever had. Thank you guys so much for popping in. We miss you here, and we hope you have the happiest holiday season. Thanks again, guys. This was so much fun. Thanks, guys. Have a great night. Happy holidays. What's been the most memorable gift you've either given or received? Domi, what about you? I got a guitar one year, and I, never, I don't even know how to play the guitar. So we'll have to do some cool. lessons. Do you still have it? Yeah. Biggest regret in my life, no, if you I wish I would have stuck with it. Would have been in your band right now. Listen, if hey, you wait a minute. Four <laughs> wait a minute. How old are you? Just out of curiosity. <laughs> I'm 25. Okay, I, just to let you know, I started playing guitar at 51. So you got. Come on. Yeah, you, <laughs> I just started. So okay, so there's hope. plenty of time. There's hope. Uh, yeah. I used to love the little toy cars, mm. like growing up. Yeah. And I would have hundreds of them. Hundreds. Oh hundreds. really? Like it's a mess. It's a mess I used around to the house. Them. Yeah. So like I'd be in my bed and, and I would have like I'd race them all like 50 cars and just racing them by myself with my imaginary. You call me to race them with you too, sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> boom, boom. Yeah. Up next, we'll nudge both Julie and Max for a little jam session. Let's see if these other guys have the vocals to join them. Gotcha. Yes. Yeah. Your water doesn't always have to taste watery, right? Presenting sparkling water that thinks it's ginger ale. The PC Ginger Ale flavors sparkling water. No sugar or calories, just fizz and natural flavors. Sip it to love it. Grand total of 17 minutes a day to watch my show.
It's so watery. of chocolate. Just heat it and enjoy. You deserve it. It's been a year. Our next guest is Kyle Alexander of the Miami Heat. Hey, everybody. How's everybody doing? Jamal, Roger. It's nice to see you, as always. Is it true you lived at the Schitt's Creek Motel together? Yeah, we did. For two years, actually, we lived out there. It probably looks better on TV than it does when we lived in there. Uh, it was definitely a Shits Creek before it became Shits Creek, so. <laughs> <laughs> Who was the messier roommate? Oh, I was, I, I'm a different guy now than I was back then, but I'd probably say, you know, I, I was probably on a little bit of the cleaner side. <laughs> no, he's OD clean. He's like a germaphobe, so oh. that's why. Folding his dirty clothes type person. <laughs> <laughs> what holiday dishes or meals are you most looking forward to? My mom makes a killer Jamaican chicken dumpling soup. It's amazing. My aunt makes an incredible mac and cheese. So there's just so many signature dishes that I can't wait for. Thank you so much for joining us, Kyle. Wish you were here, but we really appreciate your taking the time. Thank you. Happy holidays. I appreciate you guys bringing me on. What do we got here? Just a little chocolate almond medley, little finisher. <laughs> Nick, I have to tell you, I was in the audience at Bud Stage mm -hmm. um, oh when you came on stage, join our Kells. It looked as if you were in your element. But, <laughs> but uh, I just want to say this. I've never been so nervous in my entire life. Give it up for the head coach of the Toronto Raptors, Nick Nurse, everybody. Which I was standing side of the stage for an hour and a half or yeah, so why, from the start of the show, and it was towards the end when I came on. Seriously, I've never been so nervous in my life. Do you consider yourself Canadian yet, Nick? Pretty much. Let me stay in here year-round now. I think out of everyone sitting here, though, you have, like, the most experience in terms of representing mm. us. That's right. As a country? Like, what, what was that like? The moment that stands out for me the most would be carrying the flag into the opening ceremonies in 2018. And I remember thinking there were so many other athletes that we thought should have been chosen. And we looked back to the sea of, of red and white, and it just clicked in that moment that I mean, it wasn't even about ice dance, but it was barely about sport. It was about embodying the things that make Canadians so special. Even hearing representing Canada, Tessa Virtue and Scott Moyer, that, that never got old. We always had a moment we would look at each other, squeeze each other's hands, and just think, like, gosh, we're so lucky. That's so cool. When they say, like, when they're announcing their names, and it's like, there's only select few that get to hear that, you know, representing Canada, like, not representing you know, a certain team or representatives like Canada, you know? So yeah, it carries such weight, mm -hmm. doesn't it? Mm -hmm. But now that you've made it, all of you, has there been an extravagant purchase that you've made since signing a deal? Well, I mean, or... I'm, I'm excited to share this, actually, because I'm the youngest of nine, my parents divorced, and, you know, humble beginnings. And uh, my sister passed away when I was 12. She left two kids, um, Andre and Chantal. Well, there's one and one was two. And so I basically raised them with my family as the tribe. And so I was been, I've been, Blessed to be able to buy Chantel uh, her dream car. She wanted a Wrangler, hey. and so it was, yeah, That's so it was amazing. nice. It was very nice, you know, to be able to do that and to be the first to own a home, the first to graduate from college, and to really inspire the next generation. I have 18 nieces and nephews. Wow. The best gift I was able to give was um, tell my mom that she doesn't have to go to work anymore once mm. I made it to the NBA. So. That's spectacular. Uh, she never went back gladly. <laughs> <laughs> kind of the same as Jamal, buying my mom a house with my first contract so i think um you know growing up and you know watching my parents struggle to you know put all their kids through whatever they wanted to do and they always did you know just being able to you know give back you know to you know your parents so I'm just grateful for what they've given me do you guys say grace around the table like before oh, yeah. uh, you used to yeah yeah oh yeah did you still say grace still say grace yeah. yeah you know it's funny we said grace and as a kid 
you don't necessarily compute to like what it means. But as I got older, just having like a moment of gratitude before you eat, you know, just kind of appreciate how lucky you are. It's something I'm really into now. I'm not particularly religious myself, but like I like that idea of just like saying, oh, this is pretty awesome that we can all be here together. And that's something that we do with the family at Christmas time is that my dad will like find some kind of poem or something and he'll recite it to everybody that kind of speaks to, speaks to the moment, which is, which is something as a kid, I don't think I understood it all. I was like, get on with it. I want to get to the turkey. Yeah. Uh, but as you get older, you're like, okay, this is actually meaningful. And you can Absolutely. have those moments every single day, right? Every single day. Yeah. The word that comes to mind for me that, that is like so awesome is being grateful. It's so easy nowadays with, with your phones. You lose track of what's actually important in life. And to me, the biggest thing that I've learned over the last six, seven months is, is to be grateful for everything we have. I always say every day above ground is a good day. Mm -hmm. right. I have to look at breath so differently now, like even as a singer and as an athlete. Our lungs are opening, our hearts beating, you know, we could swallow, we could taste, we could fellowship, like, you know, the beauty of being able to just sing. But Julie, you, um, you are real, like, I feel like I'm a fake singer. Like, I can do the thing the Arkells do, that's sort of our lane. <laughs> you are a true singer, and we get asked occasionally to do the national anthem, and I was like, and I like to say yes to most things because I like new experiences, but that is the one thing where I'm like, can't do it because unless you sound like you do, <laughs> you can forget the lyrics to your own songs whenever you want, and it's kind of charming. <laughs> you know, if you screw up the lyrics to your own song, everyone's like, ah, there's a little moment there. It's kind of enjoyable. But if you screw up the lyrics, especially live, to the, the national anthem, uh, that is a disaster. Speaking of lyrics, mm -hmm. I'm wondering if we can't entice the two of you, maybe have a little jam session? Mm. What do you think? I, mean, I wanted to choir one time. You okay? And left and I, I want you to sing. Yeah. Yeah. Are you okay, though? What can I do to help? <laughs> the consummate coach. Let's rehearse let's a couple times, right? Yeah, let's do it, yeah. And this is, uh, this is what we're... Maybe stretch it out. Will you slow it down, you mean? Uh, amazing grace oh, yeah. How me I'm Tessa Virtue is very much like, and I'm reporting for. <laughs> Hi, Max. Hi, how are you doing? Great, how are you? Great to see you. Great to see you. Make yourself at home. <laughs> did I, did I do that? How are we doing that again? <laughs> Jamal, hi. Hey, um, oh, oh, there was a there problem. Was a problem. <laughs> was there was a problem. <laughs> Is everything okay? No, we gotta restart that. Back. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Is it true you lived at the Schitt's Creek Motel together? Do you want me to answer again? <laughs> Can you talk a little bit about the Canadian baseball? Uh, baseball. Sorry. Cut. Oh, yeah, Blue Jays had a good year. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> We're gonna Surprising, you made the playoffs this year. I thought. <laughs>